Hello and welcome to the Mike Guinari podcast. This is episode four. So I hope everybody's having a uh, great Saturday. Um, so as I mentioned yesterday, before I start discussing some of the occult um, organizations, I want to uh, spend a couple of days um, discussing the areas that I would like to research. So I'll spend today and tomorrow doing that. Um, Cause as long as it is, that it takes two days to go over. There's so much that I'm not looking at right now or don't plan to look at right now, which would take even longer. Um, so starting with the cultism, some areas to consider. Now I should preface this by saying at one point in time, there was Eastern esotericism and Western esotericism. But now I don't really, my opinion is there's probably no point in uh, distinguishing them because there's been so much crossover. So in any event, one of the um, areas I want to look into is Hermeticism. Um, it's based on the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus. I think I said that right. Trismegistus. There we go. I always have trouble with that. I always have to look at it in writing to be able to pronounce it properly. <laughs> Um, and this is a very interesting area, um, groups that practiced it, like the, uh, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, um, in a, sh in a short lifetime produced such amazing, um, stuff and information that, uh, you know, uh, it's really interesting. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Um, they were involved in a lot of things, um, magic, divination, um, all sorts of things. You can actually, though everything was uh, occult before, hidden, um, now all their information and rituals and whatnot are available online. Any event, I don't want to stray too far off the track and start talking about the organizations already. Um, another big area that I really, really want to um, study on, and I've already started to, is the Kabbalah. So the Kabbalah is about how life and the world have been created and how to achieve um, a connection with our life source, the totality of reality. Um, and there's three types of Kabbalah. The first being um, Jewish Kabbalah. And that's spelled with a K, K-A-B-B-L-A-A-H. Um, and from what I understand, that was the original form of Kabbalah. And that's the one I've actually started studying. Not to be undone, I think, based upon that Jewish Kabbalah, there was a Christian Kabbalah um, spelled with a C, C-A-B-A-L-A. -A -A. Um, I don't know much about it. Um, I don't know how much I'll get into it, um, but you know I'm probably going to try to stay away from stuff like that a little bit about about Abrahamic religions. The only reason I'm interested in the, in the Jewish Kabbalah is not because of the Judaism, but because this predates Judaism. Um, and the third form of Kabbalah is with the Q, Q A L. B A A H, I think. Um, and with the Q, that's what's called um, esoteric Kabbalah or the occult Kabbalah. And that's what many um, occult organizations and philosophies of the occult were actually they took over and changed it a bit and, you know, modified it to their own uses. But that's more. Um, it's based on the Jewish Kabbalah as well, but it's not the same as the Jewish Kabbalah. And that one would be very interesting to get into first. But I, I kind of figured I wanted to start with the, the Jewish Kabbalah, where it all started, before I start looking at variations of it. This seemed a logical thing to do. Another area that I very much look forward to um, studying and started a little bit is divination. Now, I'm not talking about the common understanding of divination. I'm not talking about telling fortunes or reading the future or any of that stuff. I don't believe that's true. 
I, you know, I, I just don't think it's, is there anything to it? I, I've tried a little tarot and nothing in that. If I try to look at it and say, okay, this is predicting this. No, nothing ever comes true for me. The divination I'm looking at is another part of the definition of divination, which most people ignore. Divination basically means um, to understand the unknown, unknown information. People have converted that into saying, okay, well, the, the information of what's going to go on in the future, what's going to happen you know, tomorrow or next week or what's going to happen to somebody. Um, well, that's knowing unknown information. But to me, it really means the own unknown information within. And I think divination methods are going to be a great tool for self-reflection, for understanding what's within us, to help us achieve that, that spiritual uh, fulfillment, that happiness. And I've used some tarot cards for this where I pull the card and, and I think about it and it helps spur thoughts that I probably wouldn't be thinking of. And it helps me learn about myself. And you can keep a journal for it. Um, in the coming episode, I'll show you one of those methods that I, I really took to um, from a uh, famous um, tarot reader. So some of those people who who do a tarot reading every morning, they pull the cards or cards and their question is, what do I need to know about today? And they could be think they're reading the future, but to me, they're using these tarot cards as almost a journal prompt to get inside their own head, access information that is not sitting there on top of their mind to figure out what might they need to be prepared for today beyond just the to-do list? So depending on the, upon the person, you could say that's divination telling the future of the day, or it could just be a self-reflection that will help you meet the challenges of the coming day. Um, I tend to lean towards the, uh, the second one, um, towards it helping you deal with the challenges of the day. Now, other than you might say tarot. Well, how is that? How is that ancient and old? You know. Well, it isn't. It isn't that ancient or old, but the principles it's based upon is very old. Is ancient. I bet most people don't know that the tarot deck, the standard one that everyone knows, the Rider Waite Smith, just a generic tarot deck. That was actually invented by the Golden Dawn, who at the time were considered, you know, a cult or whatever else. But now everyone uses it. It's like the known deck. And they incorporated elements of Kabbalah and other ancient sciences and areas. So, yes, tarot is relatively new, but the stuff in included in it is not necessarily that new. Some other sources of divination um, that I'm going to look into is Norse runes, Irish oem, the Chinese I Ching, astrology, and you have two of those. You have Western astrology, um, and Eastern Indian Vedic astrology. But all of these things I'm going to be used to learn about myself, about self-reflection. And when I hit upon something good, I'm going to share it with you and have you try it out. And hopefully it'll help you and you can let me know what you think. And the last uh, occult area that I'm going to mention for today is Rosicrucianism. And this was a spiritual and cultural movement. The writings are still available and are very interesting. And what Rosicrucianism aims to do is spiritual transformation using alchemy, alchemy within. And there are still some Rosicrucian organizations out there all claiming um, lineage to the real original Rosicrucians, but 
I don't know how we could really believe any of that without actual proof, but irregardless, it doesn't mean there's not some valuable information that they hold. So that's what I'm going to discuss today. There's a whole other episode's worth for tomorrow, and we'll get into more of that. So once again, I hope everybody is enjoying their Saturday, and until tomorrow, have a good one.